Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all having a lovely day wherever in the world you are or whatever time in the day it is right now. Um, today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about blackout and black work tattoos. Now I put up on one of my Instagram stories um, asking you guys to ask me your questions about either blackout or black work tattoos. Now I picked the top 10 most asked questions and today I'm gonna to be answering them for you as best that I can. Now, the perspective that I'm coming from in asking these questions is from somebody who has obviously got quite a lot of blackout and black work tattoos. Now, I'm not a tattoo artist, so obviously, you know, a tattoo artist is probably gonna know the answer to some of these questions a lot better than what I am, but all I can do is give you my honest opinion and answer from the perspective of somebody who sat a lot of hours of blackout and black work. So let's crack on. Let's see what the first most popular question you guys have asked is. So it says, can you still feel um, the tattoo underneath a cover up? Now, it was specifically as in under blackout cover ups. Now, a lot of people think that this is a cover up, but the honest answer is the only part that's a cover up is a tattoo that's underneath here. Other than that, all of this is just what I actually wanted. Um, let me see if you can see there. So that is the tattoo ran from here and about here and it ran underneath there. You literally can't see it and you can't feel it under the skin at all. Like there is absolutely no knowledge of it being there. So if you're looking for a blackout tattoo to cover up an existing tattoo, I'd say it's a really great idea because you literally won't be able to see it or feel it underneath the skin at all. I'm not too sure about um, other tattoos, whether they're great cover-ups, because obviously, you know, if it's line work and that, you might be able to see some lines underneath it. And if the colors aren't dark enough, then you might be able to see some of the existing tattoo coming through. But obviously your tattoo artist should know all about that. So they'll be able to get you sorted. Another question that I get asked quite a lot is, does my skin feel any different? No, there is no long-winded winded answer to that. I get asked this all the time. Um, I put up a um, TikTok video as well ask, um, of me just showing some of my tattoos. And I had loads of people saying, oh, I bet your skin's really rough or like your skin looks like it feels really different. It really doesn't, it just feels like normal skin. Like if we were in the pitch black and you were to like touch my arm or like my blackout, like what my other blackout arm, or my blackout leg or anything like that. You wouldn't, be able to, you wouldn't be able to tell that it's tattooed. The only time you can feel the difference is obviously when the tattoo's healing and it's either swollen or it's peeling. But other than that, no, you really can't feel it. Are they addictive? I mean, everyone's always like, oh, tattoos are so addictive. Like you get one and you won't be able to stop, blah, blah, blah. But I know quite a few people that only have a few tattoos. I think it's completely down to the individual. Like some people, like I already had a plan that I knew I wanted to be heavily covered in tattoos before I started. So it wasn't like I got one tattoo and then I was suddenly like, now nah, I'm addicted and I want to get a thousand. It was more that I already had that in mind. But um, I do think that because it gives you a bit of an adrenaline rush and it makes you quite like pumped afterwards, I can see how there is an addictive side to it. But I wouldn't say they are necessarily addictive per se. I think a lot of people just enjoy the aftermath of it. And when you've got something new on your skin, it can be quite exciting. So it's almost addicted to the feeling of that excitement of looking at something new and being like, wow, that's really cool. Like I really enjoy that. I want, I want that feeling again. Like I want another one. Because like anything, the novelty wears off. I think they can be really addictive, but I think it completely depends on the type of person you are. Can you tattoo over blackout? Now I've actually been asked this question so, so much. Um, I'm actually gonna do a separate video on um, white work tattoos over black blackout just because I get asked questions about it so much. As you can see here, I do have a piece of um, white work over blackout. Now to get that in, it was blacked out and then I had the white work done twice over the top of it. It still needs another go, but you definitely can tattoo over blackout, but you will need it done a lot more than what you would just normal black lines. So to answer your question, you can tattoo over it, but don't expect it to be done in one session because it takes a lot more work. But I think it looks really cool. But yes, you can tattoo over it. Another question that I get asked all the time is um, do blackout tattoos hurt more than other tattoos? 
Um, I actually got quite a lot of people ask me if they hurt more than black and grey tattoos, which I found quite interesting, just because I've always said that black and grey tattoos are like cop-out tattoos. Like, obviously everyone's entitled to enjoy whatever style of tattoo they like, and it might just be the tattoo style that they think looks really good, and if so, then fair play to you. But I like tattoos that look a bit more brutal and are a bit more sort of saturated, a bit more hardcore. And sitting for a black and grey tattoo is absolute piss easy. You've got a couple of lines and then a tiny little bit of grey wash shading. Like, it's piss easy to sit, like you barely even feel it. But if you're going to have something that's completely solidly saturated in black, it hurts a lot more than anything else I've sat for. Like, I've obviously got this sleeve here. And even though it's, it's quite black, like there's a lot of skin breaks in it still. And I've got some like more like gray shading and stuff in it. And it's just easy because they go over it once and it's already in. Whereas with blackout, they have to keep going over it to really get that saturation in there. And I find that it swells a lot more. Um, the skin just feels more like, like traumatized, I guess, afterwards. Like the healing process of it is a lot more nasty as well but I think the outcome looks a lot better. So from my personal experience, I say any solid color, anything that's solid is gonna hurt a lot more than anything that's not solid. So, you know, it's one of those, it's like my tattoos on my shoulders, like they're not that solid. So they didn't hurt that much at all. But then when you go to something that's like, again, like the middle of this, that was solid, that, that, that yeah, that obviously hurt a lot more and it took a lot longer as well. But yeah, I guess personal opinion again, like some people find line work more painful than shading, other people find shading worse than line work. But for me, it goes solid, line work, shading. So the next question is how much should I pay hourly? Now that's like asking how long is a piece of string, like every region is gonna charge different things anyway, depending on location, like if you're gonna go somewhere, um, so I, I live in England, so if you're going to go to a tattoo shop in London, their outgoings and their overheads are going to be a lot more money. So their hourly rate is going to probably be a lot more expensive. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a better quality tattoo, but where they are in that area, you know, it's probably going to cost a lot more than say, I live in a tiny town in Hampshire. You know, getting a tattoo around here is probably going to be a lot cheaper because they don't have to pay out as much. But then equally, it also comes down to skill and stuff like that. I mean, I don't ever go for hourly rates. I always just go for day sessions because it is cheaper normally to get a day session in. And if you're going for blackout anyway, you kind of would rather sit a day rather than sit in a couple of hours here and there. So, I mean, I've paid, you know, like 450 quid for a day. And I've also paid 250 pound for a day. And from my personal experience, paying more does not mean that you're going to get a better quality tattoo. I think the best thing that you can do is, you know, speak to an artist, have a look at their work. I've actually got a tattoo do's and don'ts video already on my channel, so go and check that out. I kind of explain the process of how I would pick a tattoo artist, so go and check that out for anything related to that question. So another one, I, I get asked this a lot, I get asked this a lot in person as well, which is, are you worried about tattoos damaging your body? Now, um, so all of last year and a bit of the year before that and this year as well, um, I've been in and out of um, the like doctors and hospital anyway, trying to figure out what this thing that I've got wrong with me is. I finally figured it out, but one of the first things they tested me for was ink poisoning because um, they wrote on my thing, heavily tattooed, which I was like, thank you. But um, yeah, so, and that really shocked me really because I was like, is that actually really a common thing? Um, I mean, you probably think that maybe I've done more research into it because I decided to get heavily tattooed, but I kind of just put trust in the artist that I go to that, they know what they're doing and you know they obviously you watch them set up so you can see that they're using like a singular use needle you can see that they're using the correct ppe and you know you just you know you can tell for sure you can tell if something looks clean and you can tell if something looks professional or not um but cleanliness is a really big one um again i mention a lot of this sort of stuff in my um tattoo do's and don'ts video but no, I'm not, I'm personally not worried about it damaging my body at all. Um, I'm not worried about getting ink poisoning because I go to respectful artists. Um, no, I'm, I'm really not. And the, on, the only, only, only thing I've noticed that's being tattooed heavily is that um, not even so much this arm, but this arm in the summer 
when the sun's on it, this arm burns really, really quickly. And because the skin's like, you know, like inked and black, like jet black now, you can't, you can't see the burn. So I don't know if I've got burnt until a few days later and my arm starts peeling and it gets itchy. So that is the only danger that I have. But again, it's not, it's not really a danger. Um, I just make sure I wear really high sun cream and I sit in the shade a lot more than what I used to. But I've never liked the sun anyway, so it doesn't really matter for me. Another question I get asked a lot is how many passes does it take to black out the skin fully? Now, at the moment, um, my fingers are on three passes and you can see still that they are really, really patchy. So I still need another pass at least on those. So and it depends completely on the area. Like again, if you look at my elbow, really patchy. But then if you look at like places like here, it's really nice and solid. And even like in my armpit, it's still pr pretty nice and solid. So it completely depends on the area and it depends on your tattoo artist. Like some areas might need three, four, five passes even, and other areas will just get it done in one blast. And it also depends if you go to someone who's used to doing blackout work um, my leg that's um, got a lot of heavy black work in it is literally fine like um, it's only been done once so far and I, I'm not going to need any any touch-ups of it but my arm is a lot different however I did get them done by two different artists so it might just be that the person who did my leg has got a lot more skill than the person that did my arm I'm not sure but I think it entirely depends on what area of the body that you're gonna get tattooed and also depend like I'm a barber, so my hands are constantly in water because I wash people's hair all the time. So, and your hands are always constantly rubbing and touching things and stuff like that. So I think hands are notorious for rubbing anyway. But somewhere like here on your arm, you know, when does that really ever get knocked or anything like that? It doesn't, and you know, so I think that will hold a lot better. So again, it just depends where. Another question is, do they fade? So I kind of just answered that in the last question, but yeah, they do fade. I mean. Again, you can see here, another really good example of tattoos fading is what was meant to say sad gang on my fingers. Yeah, you literally can't read it anymore. Um, again, it just depends where the tattoo is. I mean, you know, you see some people walk around that are like 90 years old and you can still read their tattoo and you know, it's still pretty solid. It just entirely depends where it is, who did it, what ink they use, their level of skill. There's so many different factors in it, but you know, if you're gonna get your fingers tattooed or your palms tattooed or like the soles of your feet tattooed and places like that, like your elbows and like probably your knees and stuff. Yeah, expect it to fade a little bit because you know, it's it's on your skin. It's not like a painting on a wall that's just gonna last forever. Like it's on your skin, your skin's like a living, breathing thing. So yeah, I think, you know, some, some areas more than others are definitely gonna fade. Um, the last question, so to go for my top 10 most asked questions is what age should I get tattooed? Now, for me, this is kind of a bit of a no-brainer because you should get tattooed at what age you think is appropriate as long as it is at least the legal age in your country to get tattooed. So again, I live in England, so you have to be 18 to get tattooed here. Um, I didn't actually start till I was 19, and the only tattoos I got at 19, I regretted. So I think, I actually think 18 is too young to be allowed to get tattooed. I think that should be up to at least 21 but I don't know. I think it's better to wait a little bit longer because then you're more mature and you know what you like and you know, you won't, even if you don't realize it, you probably do go off of trends a lot more. And you know, when other people do things, you are more inclined to follow that. That's why when you look at like teenagers, like they all dress the same and they're all in their own little individual groups. Whereas when people get older, they kind of have their own style and they kind of stop caring about stuff like that. So I think as long as you're in a position where you really know yourself, you know what you want and it's legal so you can go somewhere that is, you know, decent, I think do it. I think some people are going to get tattoos at 18 that they absolutely love forever and other people are going to have to wait till they're 30 to get the same experience. I think it's completely individual. So I don't think there is a, a one solid age for everybody because obviously we all mature at different levels and ages and stuff as well. But those are the top 10 most asked questions about my blackout and black work tattoos. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, you guys know the drill by now. And let me know what you wanna see from me next time. But anyway, take care and I will see you soon.